<laughs> right, so we've got it running. Now, just so we are clear, this, this display is being driven from this Raspberry Pi, which is a, it's actually a Pi 4, but that has got the plug, where is it? This, this plug here, this one, yeah, this one here, this is the HDMI output, which is plugged into the monitor. Uh, I think it's there, one of these sockets here anyway, right? So this is plugged into this display, and then we also have the uh, touch screen output. Oh no, that's, that's the actual HDMI there. Uh, I'll put my light on, make it easier. There we go. So you can see, this is the HDMI input to the monitor here, right? And this is the touch screen output, which is connected to one of these USBs. So this is plugged into this monitor. We don't have any high-end laptops or anything like that, which is what was there before. And this is driving this screen, right? <clears throat> and here, and I'm going to just turn that light back up again. So what I'm going to do is show you that this is actually driving it now. I've got to be careful because this display isn't really uh, proofed against people messing up. But you can you can hear it running, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that slider, and you should hear the motor change. Oh, sorry. There we go. There you go. Yeah. See? And this button works as well, so I can stop it. There. Yeah. See? So it's working. This display, which is being run from that Raspberry Pi, is powering that engine. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> now I need to sort these out because the mousing is, the, the touch is wrong because if I actually drift over these controls it actually sets them so I need to make sure it, it makes it so that you're exclusively just doing the one control. The buttons are fine but I need to set these still up the same. Obviously these dials aren't working. You know, and this is, this is wrong. But I can control the engine from there. It's just that I can't see for instance, I can't see what the slip level is and things like that, so I can control it. Ultimately, that will be automatic, but right now I need to see it. You know? <clears throat> Let's just slow it down again. Yeah, there you go. See? <laughs> so this is this is going in the car, you see. But what'll be here is it won't be all this stuff here. All it will be is you'll just have a big speedo in the middle, and then you'll have like uh, up here there will be um, the battery level or something like that you know energy amount of energy you've got or something like that and then perhaps upside here will be some indication temperature mm. and uh oh and uh it will probably be like p r n d something like that will be there at d and s or something so you've got normal mode and then high power mode or something like that we'll probably have that there as well you know and then on and off yeah like that basically <laughs> you know, and you press on and it create it, it boots up the motor and gets it ready to run and then you press off and it switches it all down again. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously this is like P N D. This is R N D, right? So that's the D, because that's the forward direction, and then that'll be the N and that'll be the R. And then we don't actually have a P because P would lock the gearbox up, you see. But we don't have any ability to do that. So I need something to do that, but right now I don't. So that'll have to do. Might have to fashion something, dog clutch or something like that, so we can lock it and park it. In fact, that's not a bad idea. 
That's actually not that's not bad idea at all. Wow. Add a dog clutch. Yeah. Because you could literally you could weld onto those something that sticks out and then you've got a, a um a pole that locks in it. That wouldn't be a bad way to do it. Hmm. As long as you don't catch anything. Yeah. Just refashion that so it's got a pole on it to lock it. You'd need to put one on both sides though, because the differential's there, isn't it? Maybe the other way to do it basically is to open up the case and put a pole into the uh, gear. So you lock the gear. Something like that would do it. I'd rather go down that route to be honest and then you can then lock the uh, transmission because these don't have transmission locks so if I actually put a, lo a transmission lock inside it which can be actuated by a solenoid that gives me the ability to, to hold the car it doesn't need a handbrake then it's got a transmission lock yeah well might not get away with that <clears throat> I'm just wondering if for an automatic has a, a transmission lock right but cars are fitted with handbrakes, aren't they? They are fitted with handbrakes, right? Because they're manual, you see. They have cars which are both manual and automatic. So they add a handbrake in so that a manual transmission, which doesn't have a transmission lock, can be sold. And then they just add an automatic gearbox to the car, don't they? Which has a, uh, a transmission lock, which doesn't mean, it means that it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you could actually sell a car without a handbrake but with a transmission lock and then call that the handbrake or call it a parking brake. Yeah, I don't know, maybe you can. Anyway, that's something else. Yeah, this is cool.